Ulster School Senior Cup semi final in association with the Irish Examiner. Crescent College Comprehensive looking for back to back finals after winning last year's competition. They face the might of CBC of Cork whose thrilling victory over PBC a month ago sets up today's encounter very, very well. We'll have full match commentary with Duncan Williams and Johnny Holland, along with myself, Dara Frawley. But before we get to that, we spoke to CBC coach Tommy Crow and Lee Nicholas of Crescent Comp a little earlier on. Look, uh, after the quarter-final game against Prez, uh, fortunate enough to win it on the day, uh, left it very, very late. Uh, but look, managed to get over the line. Uh, that would give the lads great confidence there, being a local derby and all of that. But, um, you know, look, that month is uh, it's a difficult month uh, between the quarter final and the semi final. But we've managed ourselves well. We've had a little bit of opposition against uh, other schools in a managed sort of a way. But, uh, you know, um, and uh, we had a B game against Clongos there for the rest of the squad. So we're trying to keep ourselves tipping over uh, as best we can and managing various injuries and bits and pieces. So, you know, it, it is a difficult task, but never, nevertheless, we're ready to go. And in terms of this Crescent team today, what kind of threats do they pose or what are you going to have to look out for? Well, you know, it's a long time since we uh, we played Crescent uh, in the, the league section uh, before Christmas, so I'm sure they have changed a lot in the meantime and likewise with ourselves. So, you know, like any Crescent team, uh, you'd have to respect your semi-final opponents there and we know they'll be good and we need to be at our very be best to, to, to counter them on the day. Lee Nicholas, semi-final of the Munster School Senior Cup, how have preparations been this week? Yeah, preparations have been excellent. I suppose we were out in uh, UL on the AstroTurf on the 4G pitch up for the last couple of sessions uh, just to get used to the surface. But uh, yeah, trained right through midterm. So uh, I'm fair pair to the lads. It's a big commitment to come in on their week off, but uh, there were no questions asked for this. Uh, what are your team going to need to do well against a, a very good, well-drilled and big Christian side? Well, I suppose like that, they're very well drilled, they're big, they're physical, so uh, similar to what we did against Ardscale, just front up physically is the main thing for us. Uh, but then again, being on an national turf and with some of the playmakers and key decision makers that Christians have, we're going to have to cover the backfield quite well uh, and also keep them out of our own half. So uh, there's a bit to it, all right. It's not just the physicality that you would normally expect. Uh, but uh, yeah, our lads know what they're doing. You're very welcome back to Musgrave Park for this Munster School Senior Cup semi-final between Crescent College Comprehensive and CBC of Cork. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by the half-back pairing of Mr Duncan Williams and uh, Johnny Holland. Duncan, you've been part of, of many big games, but the sense of occasion in a Schools Cup semi-final is, uh, is, is quite the thing, isn't it? Yeah, look, I think they spent the whole year training for these... Uh, well, when I was playing, it was quarter-final, semi-final. There was no back door, so if you lost your first game, you were gone. I suppose nowadays they have the back door, so it makes it a bit better. But you know, semi final, it's a bit unfortunate the Christians crowd can't uh, be here today due to a bit of uh, bad behaviour, I'm told, uh, when they beat Prez last year, or last or a couple of weeks back, with a glorious crossfield kick. So, um, look, it's just unfortunate they don't get to play in front of their crowd, but you know, I suppose it's the biggest game of the season. A couple of uh, Christians' parents, cousins and relatives will surely uh, make up the numbers. Uh, Johnny Holland, we were speaking before the game, Crescent beating Bandon 36-29 in the quarter-final eliminator and beating Ord Scullerish in a Limerick derby, 20 points to 16. On the other hand, Christians have had a m the bones of a month off after beating PBC. Do you think that has any bearing on the game? Yeah, we talk about it afterwards, don't we? <laughs> it's, it's always a factor afterwards. They did more time off or they had less time off. But, do you know, if it was me, I'd prefer to be playing games. I'd prefer to have played two weeks ago. You don't, you don't really know after a month you know, where you're at. You have to challenge yourself in different ways through training and everything else. And I'm sure they would have picked things up that they would have done across the last couple of weeks. But, again, I think it's always afterwards you start talking about that. You know, they'll, be, they'll both be fairly fresh. They're young fellas. Two weeks off is plenty, isn't it? Indeed it is. Uh, to the lineups, Christian Brothers College will line out as follows. Benjamin Lynch at full back will be accompanied by Evan Cal Murphy and Christopher Barrett, the try scorer against PBC a month ago. Alex O'Connell and Gavin O'Reardon will make up the centre partnership. Charlie O'Shea, who's been in sensational form, will be partnered by Jack Casey at nine. The loose head is Sam Loftus with Adam Rona, who was a try scorer as well against Prez. Harry Foster plays a tight head. The two Michaels, Doyle and Foy, make up the second row for Christians with Mark Skelly, Daniel Rock and Aina McCarthy at eight and captain. The bench from Stephen O'Shaughnessy, Kean Walsh, Dennis Callaghan, Connor Canelli, George Good, Oren Preener, Connor Foley, Leo O'Leary, Ronan O'Keefe and Jack O'Callaghan. Johnny, we spoke before the game about 
plenty of players which we'll get to in a few moments time but it's uh, the occasion for guys to make their name today and Charlie O'Shea at 10 is somebody who uh, who is certainly one to, to look out for Absolutely and you know you're talking with him there pulling the strings but I think that's you know it's a big occasion and sometimes at this level you think that you have to do it all you know so hopefully he'll just play the fellas into the game around him and I think the system should be better than any fella you know so um, I'm looking forward to seeing it like I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, pushing his team around the pitch and everything else but hopefully you know it's not uh, and I think you do get moments of individual brilliance in these games but hopefully it's um, you know the team running around the pitch first and then you'll see things opening up in the second half as well Duncan, we were speaking about uh, Tommy Crow, uh, old school direct uh, CBC. Can we expect more of that today, or do you think CBC might have some expansive play in their up their sleeve? Yeah, as I kind of said off right there, I think he coached me 21 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hope he's not coaching the same game plan as Rugby's evolved <laughs> <laughs> since then. But uh, no, look, Christian's obviously a big physical pack. You know, I've heard good things about Adam, uh, Adam Rona. Obviously, number eight, Ana McCarthy's uh, played under uh, Ireland underage. Um, and just looking at them there, they're quite a big physical looking pack, so I'd imagine Christians will look to play to their strength. Um, I know they have a bit of talent out the back, so but Gavin O'Reardon and uh, Barrett, I got the try last week, and as you said, uh, the 10 as well, so I hope they don't cripple themselves by just looking to play with that four pack. Yes, it is a strength, but also look to use the backs as well. Typical of uh, Scrum Half and Out, I have to say that the forwards won't do uh, <laughs> the work. Crescent College comprehensive line out as follows Jed O'Dwyer, Evan Cusack, and Josh Boland make up the back three. Ono Callahan, who had a brace of points from the tee in the win over Ard Skull, reaches an outside centre partner by Troy Scorer in the same game. Joe McInerney at 12. Ryan Godfrey and Marcus Lyons make up the half back pairing. Mark Fitzgerald, Connor Cleary, and Dennis O'Dwyer make up comps front row. Jack Summers and Sean McGee in the engine room. Fionn Casserly who was a standout last year in last year's final win against Prez along with Andrew O'Hearn and Captain Killian Kelly in at number 8 Jonathan Byrne, Carl Lang and Ryan Connor Ryan, Jordan Power, Charlie Fenton Cormac Quinn, Michael O'Mara, Oscar Davey Ben Gallagher and Evan Bennett make up the bench for uh, Crescent College Comprehensive uh, Johnny Holland, while the atmosphere is building here uh, we were speaking about Fionn Casterly, Jedda Dwyer, Mark Fitzgerald, all representatives for Irish under-18s, all guys who played against Prez in last year's final. How important is it that they bring that experience to Cork today? Yeah, I think that's huge because, you know, the, the occasion will get to some guys. You know, it's, at senior level it gets to them. At, uh, at professional level it can get to people. So I think having been there last year, some fellas got to taste it from the bench as well last year. Um, having a bit more experience in the kind of schools, uh, the international school team, you know, I think that's huge for them as well. But, you know, they, they can give the leadership around the place, but then you'll, you'll always get someone who surprises you. You know, someone will come out um, on top here that you haven't expected and there'll be a big performance from them as well. But I think you do need those guys, you know, to bring the bit of calm when things get um, a bit messy. You know, the crowd is going to be up and it's going to bring a lot of excitement, but you do need those guys to settle it down when it's important and control the pace of the game when they need to. Took it for you, experience. Uh, how much does it count on the day? Yeah, I think it's exp- uh, it's important to have experience, but I don't think you can just rely on it to win you the games. You know, experience is seeing something for, is not seeing something for the first time. So they train every week, they run moves, they see these moves every week, and they practice it. So yes, they played the big occasions, but they've also seen, even though they haven't played, they've seen these things before. So you no, know, I think it is important to have it, but I don't necessarily think it'll win you the game by itself. Time will tell. We're about four minutes away from kickoff as uh, the atmosphere is building nicely here. Johnny Holland, you spoke about uh, performance psychology and whatnot between CBC, but we've seen a lot of shoulder rolling. But this is all set up to be a cracker, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I, I saw Crescent last year in the final, and they play a lot of really good rugby. Like their their transitions are really good. Um, their their back play was very good. They run nice and square, and they do hold inside shoulders and everything. So if you take your eyes off them, you know someone like Jed O'Dwyer at full back. They're, they're very, very good at, at executing, and they were last year as well. I think Christians are going with a bit of uh, pumping themselves up here, and they're trying to intimidate the opposition, but we'll see how they are when there's movement on the pitch afterwards. Well, let me tell you, even as a second row forward, well retired, it is very, very nice to be up here in the commentary area than down there in front of that uh, CBC pack as camp. Uh, get ready to go in for their huddle before the game Duncan Williams what are the kind of messages that will be given to, to players as we are at knockout stage and a lot of these guys today it will be their last game for their school yeah I think sometimes to kind of gets winning is everything but I think if they go out with the attitude to try and enjoy it the win will come with it you know I think previously obviously as I said before it used to be quarter final and if you didn't win you were gone so tensions kind of got a bit of much and people went into their shell I think you know go out and enjoy it and that's when you play your best and uh, Johnny Holland, we're not quite at the time for uh, score predictions yet, so I will, uh, I will leave you off the hook. But 
what would be the absolute do's or the excuse me the absolute don'ts early on in a game what what would you uh, be looking to avoid well you're saying to Duncan there like what are they going to be told to do below under the stand underneath us here but I think it's, it's cup rugby at the end of the day you know so you do have to you know play the percentages to some degree but you have to play as well you can't forget to play in a cup match you know so I think the worst thing in Duncan saying there you have to enjoy it or you have to go to actually play rugby if you come off the pitch having lost and not played you know I think there's a lot of regret there if you at least play and you lose the game you can, t- you can live it yourself a small bit so I think you have to go to win you have to be positive but you have to be pragmatic along the way you can't play too much rugby in your own half you have to take your shots at goal when it's on maybe you throw the dice when you have a bit of uh, the upper hand you know but at the same time it's cup rugby um you know Duncan's going with the development here but I think you know anyone who's on either side they'll be looking to get the win and live on for another round you know so um pragmatic cup rugby but you do have to for, to remember to play as well you agree entirely with uh, with a Johnny sentiments Duncan yeah I think like any of the big games that any of us have ever lost it's always the ones that we regretted most of the ones that we didn't fire a shot so you know, I think they've got to go out there with the attitude that they're going to play to try and win this game as opposed to stay in it and see what comes of it. So go out and attack from the start. Joy Neville will be our referee uh, today. A uh, reminder, if there is a draw, that it, there will be a replay next Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, the crowd uh, filling up nicely, lads. Uh, again, uh, with, with, with getting sentimental all the way back to 2001, John, you're a little bit younger. but um, Duncan was showing his age, right? <laughs> there. You, were, you, you, uh, you miss days like this being on the pitch? Uh, yeah, yeah, look, <laughs> um, I suppose these are the glory days back in the day, you know, you're in school, there was, I remember we played the final against Prez when I was in fifth year, it would have been 2003, there was eight or 9,000 people here, like, so, um, they were the good old days, I suppose, um, it was a final Paddy's Day, everyone came out to, that was actually quite a good game as well, and I think there was a good, probably five or six lads went on to play in the Munster Academy, got a few caps from Munster as well, so it was a good quality uh, game. Duncan always reminds us of his... Uh <laughs> his exploits at school's rugby as well, his heyday. I didn't get the opportunity to play here, um, but Duncan always reminds us. Yeah. The, uh, what could have been? What could have been? <laughs> the uh, the crease three lads in, in Turner's Cross are spilling <laughs> in the gate as well uh, with their uh, Johnny Han- Holland band. They were, they were banned like the Christians crowd. This <laughs> year, yeah. A reminder that we will have full coverage uh, in association with the Irish Examiner of the second semi final tomorrow on air from 115 for St. Munchen's College against Prez. But we have the small matter of this Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi final between Crescent College Comprehensive and CBC. Kickoff is fast approaching. At quarter to two, there's a slight wind blowing from left to right. It does tend to swirl down on that pitch. And uh, the elements can be a little bit tricky here, let us half You said the way the wind was going, I'm not sure I fully believe you, because it's going every different way as well, isn't it? Depends the flags on the are, f- you're are going like the clappers over there, and that one's not budging in the other corner, so it's, yeah, <laughs> it's hard no, to tell. We've played a few times here now, and it's... Uh, you know, one of those pitches is always a win. There's always just when you think it's going a certain way, it changes on you. So um, I think every time you're like, if you're kicking into this goal, it's going to be different to what it is when you're kicking down there. It's just a different direction altogether. So uh, it's a d- difficult conditions. Not a not a blade of grass to throw up either. So we see how it goes. Yeah, my once the ball gets above the stand there, it always kind of sucks it in towards us as well a bit. So my mid air and qualifications lads didn't actually <laughs> allow for me to know where, where where the wind was. It actually looks like it's 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 raining over. The main thing is it was beautiful on the. Uh, the part motorway coming down from Limerick. A little bit of mind games potentially here from both sides uh, before they, they come back out. But uh, a, a sizable crowd from uh, Crescent to our way to our left. And a few of the uh, CBC Ultras have snuck into the right hand side with, with flags as CBC are led out by Captain Aina McCarthy. And as I know, we commented on it before the game, but uh, for 18 year olds, the sheer size of this Christian's team is, uh, is formidable. Yeah, they're, they're a big side, aren't they? You know, they weren't that size when I was there, <laughs> so um, you'll see if they can use that now to their advantage, but it's um, it's always going to be a case of big physical side in a cup, in a cup game, and in a knockout game. You know, they will have the upper hand, so we'll see how they use it. And I know we spoke about it before the game, uh, Johnny, but do you expect a little bit of shadow boxing early doors? We know that Christians with the size of them have been very direct in, in previous games. We spoke to Tommy Crow before the game that they played against Congos. He kept very tight-lipped about they played in that game, but... We're expecting expansive rugby against Crescent, so something's going to have to give. Yeah, I think there will be a bit of shadow boxing, and sometimes in these games, like it takes something to go wrong or someone to get the upper hand for the opposition to start playing, and all of a sudden the game opens up a bit. I think if you're looking at Crescent and they're facing up against that Christian's pack, maybe they already know they have to move them. And like I said last year, they were well able to move the ball, uh, well able to play attacking rugby. So they're going to have to use their strengths in that si- sense as well and move Christians around the pitch. But you know, will Christians 
uh, have the ability to slow that game down or do whatever they want and, and control the pace uh, until they decide to open up as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what the, the opening exchanges bring as well. Yeah, just with this type of pitch as well, obviously, Christian's pack, if they get any bit of go forward, it's hard to to get back to parity when you're on this 4G. You know, any team that gets a good go forward and keeps the ball quick, it's hard to, to get back in the fight. The uh, dreaded score predictions, lads, I'm going to have to ask you there. So we'll, we'll start with the uh, the independent, Chris Dree, former student, Johnny Holland. I, if I don't go with Christians as a Cork man, I think I'm going to be giving it all away. So I'll go with Christians. God knows what score there's going to be, but let's go 30-24 for a big high-scoring game on, an, on a 4G pitch. Duncan? I'll follow Johnny's suit as he's the boss. So uh, <laughs> I'd like to say Christians as well, 24-20. Uh, Let's hope for a high-scoring game, as you said. Joy Neville in the middle. CBC's Charlie O'Shea has the ball in hand. 35 minutes aside, and we're underway in this Pinergy Munster School Senior Cup semi-final. Ball taken by Kelly. And Godfrey doesn't quite find touch. Well fielded again by McCarthy, the captain, and a big carry as Christians find themselves five metres inside the Crescent half. Carry by Loftus there. Nice little short line. The present seem to have disrupted from that, and you can see the lift it's given them. Early doors. Yeah, I think Adam Rowan is going into contact there, trying to get himself into the game, but the fellas around him run a slightly different page. Crescent were able to swarm all over him and cause a small bit of a knock on, so there's the, the early nerves out of the way. We can start to play now. Yeah, a bit of a one out one there. That's uh, Christians can't keep doing that, it'll be a bit of trouble for them. First scrum's always a big one, isn't it? We'll see what the weight of the pack is going to give to, to Christians now. Low clear calling. Stay. From Neville. The ball is in the hands. It's Crescent look to move it out the back. It's a lovely little half break there. Joe McInerney, a try scorer against Starts to reach in the quarter finals. Crescent intent on playing through captain. Killian Kelly again. Seen plenty of the ball early. It's a lovely little pass out wide for the judge to have gone forward and uh, Johnny Holland as we said that expensive play from Crescent yeah that was tight yeah. <laughs> if I was the coach there I don't know what I'd be thinking but that was tight we're right in line with that um, maybe I'll be proven wrong but um, that was a decent pass over the top yeah, early, early warning signs there for Christians they need to get their fold around the corner a bit better a bit snappier Crescent really beating them around the corner there second scrum in as many minutes Crescent showing trying to play enterprising rugby Charlie O'Shea has a little chat with his outside centre Alex Connell as to what they will do feed from Casey to O'Shea it's at the back and it's a great read from Old Crescent's outside centre Owen O'Callaghan there as the wind picks up and Crescent with an early opportunity here. First arriving players. O'Callaghan was hitting 50 plus metres towards the Dolphin end. But at risk of Johnny Holland calling out my weather predictions, <laughs> I'm not sure if he'll... Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking the wind is coming from left to right at me here, but the wind the, and the flag is going the other way, so I'm not sure what he's going to do. Don't, don't trust me to judge it either. Godfrey taking no chances. That probably does show how difficult that wind is swirling around. But Crescent will have a line out and a first attacking platform inside the Christians' half. As the hooker Cleary waits for his call. You hear Joy Neville telling no huddles. Crescent elect to go for a six plus one. Line out Andrew Hearn. Loitering outside in the back line. Well read by Christians, but it's a knock-on advantage for Crescent, and they will get a chance to play here. It's a nice little kick in behind. Out on the full and no advantage and back for a scrum. I think Joy Neville there giving plenty of communication as well. Yeah. It's good to hear, isn't it? And trying to speed the game up. No more huddles at lineouts. We're always talking about it. A meeting before all the lineouts. We don't understand it. We uh, we just want to get the ball into play. But um, it's good to see speed up the game. It's good to see such a top quality ref doing the game. I remember, you know, it was how many years ago my final that we played against Prez. It was Dave McHugh actually refed it. Yeah. He was still international ref at the time. Maybe he was just finishing up, but it makes a big difference. Really showing your age there, uh, yeah, Duncan. Yeah. He keeps doing it.
early engage there and Crescent look to move it through McInerney again good carry there from Jack Summers very abrasive in the contact Crescent staying close on the clear out it's great attacking the line there again by Godfrey pulling the strings early doors ball is in the hands of Jed O'Dwyer son of Anthony was involved in that superb Crescent team with a certain David Wallace in the early 90s Christians making a nuisance of themselves at the breakdown but referee Neville gave the warning the advice wasn't heeded and uh, Crescent with a second penalty in as many minutes in the Christians half yeah and you asked beforehand you know what do you not do give away penalties you know so it's just going to give more easy entry if they are into the wind it's giving them cheap possession now that Christians aren't going to be able to, to use possession while they've got the wind you know Godfrey puts Crescent Kampf about eight and a half metres from the Christians line. Christians jumpers did get up in the form of Michael Doyle to disrupt earlier on. The wind is a little bit swirling and Crescent's movement on the ground was perhaps a little bit slow for forwards coach Lee Nicholas earlier on. They go to two in the tail. Christians look to challenge, but Crescent oh, have been turned over. It's a great carry there by Lucid. Sam Loftus. He just plucked the ball out, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Legality at Malls. Crescent have been very dangerous to break down here. They got another poach there. O'Shea. High hanging kick. He's given O'Dwyer space, and O'Dwyer does like the broken field. But it's well marshalled by the Christians' defence as they swarm around him. Lions again at nine. All the Christians forwards are together on this side here, if Crescent could expose it. Captain Kiley. Out to Godfrey again. Crescent looking to play expansive ball. Christians very, very aggressive at breakdown. Cries of offside. Summers again. He's got through good work early doors. Referee Neville says advantage off feet. And we will come back. Uh, for a penalty and Johnny Holland that's three penalties that we've seen Christians give away in the opening six and a half minutes yeah it's three penalties I thought that one was harsh enough um, I'd like to have another look at it but the uh, captain Aidan McCarthy nearly had another one nearly had a turnover earlier so they're clearly trying to get the ball back you know they're defending to get the ball back they're just possibly getting it slightly wrong now and you know it's going to take its toll you can see they're being spoken to here as well so you know Joy Neville won't put up with that for very long and in a game like won't put up with that for very long and in a game like this you don't need to give a numerical advantage or a territorial advantage advantage early on Duncan as much as uh, Christians are, are giving away uh, these chances we spoke about uh, things not going right for people in reviews after when you lose a game but Crescent will need to take those opportunities in the 22 with Moles they don't want to be coughing up possession in, in, in prime positions like that yes yeah, I suppose as you said there yeah they won't get many more opportunities but Christians actually did quite well they stole the ball out of the mall played a few phases of kick but then put themselves back under pressure again by giving away a penalty here with, in their, on their own 10 again so it's you know when you get out, you got to stay out and not just keep inviting pressure back in yourself. Owen O'Callaghan tells Killian Kelly he fancies three points. O'Callaghan was imperious with the boot against the Art School Rich, particularly in the second half, kicking under pressure, being rewarded with a place today in the semi final. He kicked in the warm up from here and it looked like it was tailing off to the left, so we'll see if he can judge the wind a little bit here. Oh, no, Sean Roma from O'Callaghan. It's gone just to the right. Christians just about managed to clear that. Bit of a short run-up from O'Callaghan. Uh, Johnny didn't quite catch it uh, to the right, but they have a line on the 22 here. Ben Healy side, wasn't it? <laughs> Set it up, step back and boot it. It looked like he possibly overcompensated if he was going the other side in the warm-up. No, he didn't see all his kicks, but I de definitely saw one going to the left. And he's trying to correct that and just gone slightly right. It's happened to all of us. Let's see if he can get it right the next time. Cleary again, Crescent's third line of the afternoon. They've tended to go towards the front where Christians have stacked. They like to go to two again, and it's taken by Captain Kelly again as a mall. About three metres in the touchline.
O'Callaghan with a very good carry there. Godfrey marshalling his troops very well at 10, telling his forwards to carry. And Summers with the carry. Christian's going very hard at the breakdown. Godfrey again. Runs down a bit of a rabbit hole there. Christian's doing very well to defend and comp just outside the 22. Kelly again met well by Christians, but the breakdown work from Camp has been very, very good. Hands of the ball is in the hands of back rower. Fionn Casserly again has played some of his rugby at second row. Godfrey, lovely little two on one, but it's well marshalled by CBC. Camp put a lot of the ball early doors, but uh, Christians defence standing firm. Good defensive sets, aren't they? I think um, the ball was slowed down. Joy Neville was even questioning why the ball wasn't being used in attack at that stage, slowing their own ball down. But um, it looked like they were trying to keep it nice and tight and uh, start to punch through the, the Christians' defence, but Christians had the answers for them there. Yeah, I think Crescent can keep still play it nice and tight, but they can play the tempo of the ball there. I think ball is there to be played and the nine is waiting for the fours to come around. If he just gets on his bike, they'll come around with him and he can offer a bit more of a threat. It was a bit easy for Christians to defend there. Lovely flight of dart from Adam Rona to hit Michael Doyle at the tail of the line-out with Christians. Stay, stay Interestingly, forward. CBC electing to go to the tail while Crescent's three line-outs have went to the front, but... Decent exit from CBC as O'Shea finds his opposite number. Godfrey to O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer has a little look up and says, let's go. And O'Dwyer goes well, finds his winger on the outside, it's Cusack. Cusack making ground up the left-hand side. Looks like a small bit of a seatbelt tackle there, and Neville... The referee says there, but um, the pre-game chat, Johnny, you're on the money, uh, Crescent here to play, and Jed O'Dwyer, the epitome of that. Yeah, and I think like if you're going to kick the ball to, to Jed O'Dwyer there, you're going to have to have a connected line coming up, because he is looking to play. Uh, they got away down that left-hand touch line in different circumstances a while ago, and obviously have put Christians under a small bit of pressure to, to force a kind of a, a scramble tackle, which you know obviously is illegal, and it's given another entry now. Good variety in attack there. Duncan O'Shea's kick coming down the, the left-hand touchline and then moving up to the other side. Yeah, it was good to see uh, them looking to counter-attack. As I said, they're looking like they're going out to try and win the game here as opposed to wait and see what happens. So good good crisp passing as well. Got it to the other side of the pitch. The ball in the hands of uh, Connor Cleary, the hooker for Crescent. The fourth line of the afternoon on a 2-3 split. Summers takes the ball at the tail and Crescent are on the move. CBC have done well to stifle that as Crescent reload on the uh, blind side. It's a good carry by the loose head. Mark Fitzgerald, a try score against Art Scullerish in the quarter final a number of weeks ago. Screams of red around the corner from Marcus Lyons. Some calls don't change for any team over the years. <laughs> Lyons again. Andrew Hearn. Christians, as we said, competing very hard over that game line. And so Dwyer out the back, and the ball is in the hands of Evan Cusack on this side. Oh, two Christians people on this side as uh, the Crescent fans to our left say roll away. Good footwork pre-contact there from Casserly, with Christians defending. Very evident that they're looking to chop and clamp in, the, in D set. Summers potentially had numbers outside him, but he's met by wonderful Christians defence there. Lou said Sam Loftus again, he's got through some amount of work in the opening 10 minutes. Use it nine. Slower ball now for Crescent as Lyons goes through. Nice little offload there and interplay through the back row. And some smart play from Lyons and a right smile from Duncan Williams who would have potentially done the exact same thing in that situation. I was laughing before because Joy Neville's on his case as well to him to play the tip for the ball I'd say <laughs> more than anything but yeah, smart play there by him yeah, milking the penalty. But you can see Crescent have gone to 5 plus and 6 plus lineouts for yeah. all of them, haven't they? So they're looking to use their mall, whatever they've seen uh, in Christians, or maybe they're just trying to set themselves up. And then they're looking to actually keep it nice and tight, like Duncan has said, until they throw the pass and they're using the hit um, as a bit of a screen and going out the back of them in the boot in the second line of attack. And they have gotten soft edges on both sides now, so they're keeping it tight until they pull the trigger. And you spoke about a bit of shadow boxing. There's all of a sudden an extra little pass, an extra tip on inside in those pods. So they're starting to feel their way into the game now. Joy Neville had a conversation with CBC captain Aina McCarthy there, presumably, about the six penalties they've given away in the, the opening nine and a half minutes. And uh, Crescent now really need to, to make this pressure pay with Is a line out about six and a half, seven metres from the uh, Christians line. Is that 6-1 in penalties or 6-0? Six, six 
But if you're the Christians defensive coach, you're very happy with their defensive sets, yeah. except the entries that they keep giving back, the cheaper penalties, you know, so they, they've had all the answers besides when they're giving the penalties away and leaving them back into their own territory, you know. Summers goes for the call, but it's well picked off by Michael Foy. Christian seem to have done their homework at set piece, turning over two of Crescent's four lineouts in O'Shea. A high kick, but Godfrey, the 10 has really fielded that well, and it's a Dwyer. But you could hear clearly there, Joy Neville had said that uh, Christian's hookers, Adam Rona, was offside on the way, was in front of Charlie O'Shea, and that's, uh, that's a silly penalty to be given away. They just gotten out, hadn't they? So similar to the mall up on the on the other side of the pitch there when they turn over the mall, they kick and then give away another penalty again fairly quickly and just invited the pressure back on them. A lot of opening pressure from Crescent in this opening ten minutes. I think it's encouraging for Christians that they're not being beaten yet, like they have a bit of an answer at set piece. They're stopping them all besides one went forward. Um, they've cut out a few lineouts, they've stripped the ball out of them all. They've been very uh, solid in defence, they've actually got a lot of dominant hits as well. Um, Sam Loftus had a big one there in particular, but um, you know, this pressure will tell at some stage. Malfunction at the Crescent lineup, we will play advantage and Crescent snipe through. Scrum half Foley gets his forwards to take over. It's a good carry there again and clear out. Lyons himself has a little dart. He's well taken there. Summers again with a good carry. Big emphasis from Christians on the tackle and chop again, even in their 22. They're living dangerously. Cleary met by a brick wall in Christians and Christians again through captain Aina McCarthy going very well. And it's O'Callaghan, a lovely little step, rangy footwork, and a lovely little backhanded offload to his centre partner there. O'Callaghan plays at nine. It's his number seven, Andrew O'Hearn. Crescent building phases in the 22 here. As the ball is slowed down. Carry again close in. Summers with a lovely little hand. Deft touch from the big man in the middle. Does very well to clear out. And Captain Ina McCarthy. He's going to go to the bin here, I think, but he's actually been very good in the breakdown. Um, it's probably a tight one. He has to do something for his team. The, the emphasis for people watching, lads, on that and the, the defensive set there, it's very evident that Christians are looking to actually chop and the next guy in is going. But if you were the coach, are you telling those guys to just leave, leave the ruck alone a little bit? Because the penalty count is absolutely insane in the first 12 minutes. Yeah, well, I think they've probably gotten on the wrong side of Joy Neville, yeah. rightly or wrongly, uh, at the moment. So I think maybe give five, ten minutes where you say, look, lads, concentrate the tackle, leave the ball alone. They're not really causing us troubles or trouble very much, so we can just leave them have the ball and defend and defend and defend. Cleary gives early and Crescent with a nice little trick player, just two metres short now. Ball is in the hands of Summers, he goes back. It's a good carry by Crescent and it's not down and it's turned over. Oh. And it's an unbelievable clearance kick from CBC second row. The ball looked like it was lost in contact going over the line, but the quick reactions of second row and Michael Foy means they survive on this occasion and that is... Well, it's a missed opportunity for Comp. It's a massive, massive bit of relieving play for Christians. You yeah, just, just there before the penalty, Owen O'Callaghan made a little kind of half break, a five, five, seven metre kind of break, but it was Lions that you played the tempo of the ball there, kept the speed on it, rather than slowing it down like you had done previously. So I think for Crescent, that's a bit of an eye-opener to see that if the ball's there to be played, let's go and move it, and that's when you start causing trouble. You spoke about experience before the game and what it stands for. You know, Aina McCarthy's obviously a big player for them and captain. And there, Michael Foy just steps up and relieves a bit of pressure. So he's taking the boots of uh, of Aina McCarthy here now and leading the team a small bit. Forwards with big moments as uh, Andrew O'Hearn takes the line out and Crescent set up, but it's on the short side here. Turnover with Christians, and they're slowly growing in with two big moments there, as you rightly said, Duncan, with the loss of their their captain to the bin for a couple of moments. But uh, Christians now with an opportunity to exit their lines again and Crescent will be kicking themselves with the amount of possession they had but no points to show for it. Exactly, and if you flip this around, like Christians have sucked up all the pressure but you know they've had all the answers and Crescent haven't been able to get a score on the board which is going to frustrate them You know, nearly 20 minutes into the game, all the possession, all the territory and they haven't had anything to show for it. Christians will get their time. You know, it looks like the, the possession is going to be played in that half for a while so if Crescent are going to go on to win this game they're going to have to find something soon. 7v7 seven in the scrum by virtue of underage rugby as we said captain mccarthy is in the bin a little bit of uh, 
the dark arts from Christian's trying to waste a bit of time perhaps here. Set. As Jack Casey feeds. Ball is at the base. O'Shea has a chat. Took his eyes off that perhaps, but the ball is a judge to have went backwards and O'Shea does very, very well. It's a great kick. O'Dwyer again has been very elusive. Beats the first man and the second. Lovely little offload to O'Callaghan. Christian's going very hard after the breakdown. That was coming. Great attack by Cahill Murphy there to shut that down. Yeah, I think that breakdown penalty was coming. They've had a load of bites at it and they were possibly unlucky on a good few of them. Um, but now they're after getting their way up the pitch and all of a sudden they have a kick at goal to go ahead, which was very unlikely um, only a couple of minutes ago. You see the, the Christian's defence is actually very connected, isn't it? Yeah. When someone hits, the other fellas hitting in outside him. Um, they've got a lot of two-man hits. They're not going to be beaten too easily here, I'd say. The one thing, even though like Crescent had all that pressure, Christian's never seemed rattled after yeah. all the penalties. They've seemed fairly composed. and I suppose here now they have a chance to go 3-0 up. Cup rugby, as uh, Johnny Holland said, Crescent have pretty much owned the ball for the first 15 minutes, but CBC's tenacity at the breakdown has given... Benjamin Lynch the opportunity to put the Cork side in the lead here in Musgrave Park. Decent connection. But just to the right and wide. Tricky conditions, uh, Johnny, even though from the cameras it may appear it's pristine down there, but both kickers missing their first kick, but just narrowly in both cases. I think tricky environment as well. He was yeah. put under a small bit of pressure from the stands, um, so he'll be disappointed with that one. It'll be nice to silence the crowd when he gets an opportunity again. Ryan Godfrey with the 22 dropout. Lands just inside the Christians' half in the hands of Lynch, looking to make amends a little dink over the top. Where's it going to bounce? Huge collision with Lions at nine. Joy Neville very clear in her communication all afternoon here. And Crescent just looked it down the tempo as we look for a box kick potentially. Lions right footed, it's going to come back in and Lynch feels very, very well. Crescent player weary not to take him in the air. We spoke about nines buying penalties, that was a nice bit there <laughs> from Jack Casey. Good dive. But you see, uh, Crescent actually did very well to be aware of their 22. They set the forward pod inside the 22, haven't been outside it, so more contact in the 22 Points. means that the ball is now in the 22 to clear off the pitch. And if they had done so, they wouldn't be looking at potentially being 3-0 down now. Lynch will have a second opportunity about 15 metres to the left of uh, his miss a few moments ago, interestingly. Ian Sherwin of the Crescent Camp coaching staff remonstrating with one or two of his players perhaps saying that that box kick could have went off the pitch. We speak about cup games and moments and what they're going to be told to do. I think the ball going off the pitch to, to reset would be a big one. Backs tend to do what they want on the pitch. That's unfortunately it's only <laughs> forwards who follow guidelines. They have to be told. Lynch lines it up again. Tricky enough wind. <laughs> Strikes it well, does Lynch, and this one is straight through the posts. And Christian's lead in this Munster School Senior Cup semi final three points to nil after 18 and a half minutes. Johnny Holland, a difficult kick, but uh, well struck by Lynch. Yeah, it was very well struck, and I think his first strike was very nice as well. You can see his slow rotation in the ball. It's uh, you know evident of a good, good solid strike. But I'm actually quite happy for him. Any time that's getting a bit of uh, pressure from the sideline, it's nice to be able to silence that. But I'm just laughing at, my, at myself here. We're, we're speaking about a big, high-scoring game. We're three 0 and there's 19 match minutes played. So we'll see how it goes. The game will explode into life yet. It's a good long kick by uh, Godfrey into the right-hand corner for Christians, who reset three, just over three minutes left on the bin for Captain McCarthy as Loftus with another massive carry. Loosehead is a really powerful young fella as O'Shea 
sends O'Dwyer backtracking but feels very very well finds his out half Godfrey kind of an unorthodox oh, kick I'll see. Sure, uh, yeah I think there was a there was prize for it being touched but might have gotten that one wrong Jack Summers speaking to the touch judge thinking the ball was touched bit of an honest mistake but again much like Crescent getting a litany of penalties early doors it seems like uh, Christians are, are tagging on nicely here They haven't really had a chance to attack, have they? So they have an opportunity here now to start launching off the line out. Yeah, McCarthy getting to come back on now as well. School's rugby sin bin is shorter than, uh, <laughs> than the pro game for anybody you might think that. Uh, CBC having in with the fourth official here, but the officiating has been top notch thus far. As uh, hooker Adam Rona, as we said, a try scorer in that enthralling game against Prez. And it's well stolen by Summers, who makes amends for his offside penalty. Both sides having done their homework on their lineouts early doors. It's Lyons, high hanging kick. Christians claim it through McCarthy. Does very, very well. In the face of two or three Crescent players. And it's Rona again with a carry. Ferocious contest at the breakdown, both sides. O'Shea. And the ball is claimed by Crescent. To the back row, Fionn Castle. does very well. Summers got through a hell of an amount of work in the first 21 minutes. Cries of keep the width from the Crescent coaching staff, but manhandled by a Christian's player in that right hand touchline. And Christian's again. Proved to be a nuisance at the breakdown, and Joy Neville says, Is that Michael Foy man handling people there? Was it? Yeah. Yep. It might be high scoring at the moment, lads, but it's certainly intriguing to see what way it's going. We'll get there, we'll definitely yeah. get there, it'll get to 30. You've a long way to go to get to your score. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Lynch sends the match ball out over the stands and Christians will have a line out five metres inside the, the old Crescent half I suppose the, the, the cries from the neutrals lads will be to see teams go through phase play but um, we just haven't seen that quite yet and that's what happens in these games though isn't it you know there's there are penalty concessions and one or two mistakes I don't think there's been too many errors but um, yeah I think if, if we can see a few more phases I think Crescent had a lot of phases to be fair to them when they had their hands on the ball we haven't really seen Christians open up yet Messi line out from Christians, but Rona again clears up. Ball goes out. Doyle again with a good carry. O'Shea calls for the blind side, and the ball goes in, and it's left by out half Ryan Godfrey. And Crescent now under a little bit of pressure will have to secure the line out to get an exit, but a decent play from, from Christians there. Yeah, we spoke with Cup Rugby, didn't we? And being a small bit more pragmatic, and they've just put themselves in a decent position to put Crescent under a small bit of pressure now. Present electing for a six plus one line out. They go to the front and it's well taken as they set them all. McCarthy and Doyle doing their best to pester scrum half lines. Whose right footed kick just brings play just outside the 22, and Christians and Charlie O'Shea will be very happy with this attacking platform. Yeah, hopefully now they can execute the line-out and get good clean ball. They've had a bit of disruption there the last couple, so it'll be interested to see what they can do off this. The dark arts, as we said, with the line-out. <laughs> as an injury is called, but... Still that little bit of shadow boxing, Johnny. Not really massive tempo to come into the game yet. No, and it, it'll be, um, I suppose both teams are still in the game, obviously, but there's a you know, slight advantage to Christians if we're looking at those conditions. It doesn't feel like it up here, but the way the game has been played, you, you would think that Cre uh, Crescent have had a bit of a, a bit of better luck in the first half with the conditions, like they were able to play a bit more ball. So if Christians get their hands on the ball as much as that, you know, they'll be hoping that they can convert um, and, and pull away a small bit more. 
change for the uh, present college comprehensive team. Charlie Fenton comes into the fray. We're yet to see the number of the uh, Crescent player Seven coming off. Andrew Hearn, is it? Taken at the tail by Christians, and they're rolling Maul is on the move here as Crescent scramble to get in. And it's brought straight to ground, and Christians will have an opportunity here, you would imagine, to stretch their lead by a further three points. I'd like to see them go down the line. Yeah, yeah I think they've had percent. the upper hand here. I, you know, we speak about playing cup rugby, but when you get the opportunity to convert, you know, they're looking to gamble. Benjamin Lynch lands Christian six metres from the comp line. Crescent and Christians did meet in the Munster Schools group stage before Christmas. On the line. Crescent were victorious. Him, Excuse me, Christians were victorious in that scenario, and their mall was very, very powerful. Ball oh. taken by Foy, and it's a great set at the front of the lineout. And Christians are moving towards here. The ball is with Rona, and Rona oh. gets the first try of this Munster School Senior Cup semi final here in Musgrave Park. And Johnny Holland, Christians back themselves to go to the corner and take full advantage. Yeah, I think when uh, many years ago when Duncan was playing the game, when we were playing the game, you know, it would have been 3 6 9 and you would have been killed for doing something like that. But that's the way the game is going, you know, they had the upper hand. They've finally got their hands on the ball for a sustained period of time and you know they, they backed themselves to go to the corner and they've gotten the rewards for that. Yeah, I think in these kind of you know big cup games, I think scoring tries is what wins of the games. You know, I don't, I don't think you can rely on just three six nine anymore. You know, I think all the teams reference that, you know, they need to score tries to win these competitions. The new age of uh, playing. C B C would be delighted with the opening twenty five minutes having Soaked up all the pressure thrown from Crescent and getting the big moments right thus far as Lynch lines this up. Two from three thus far. Difficult kick for a right footed kicker. Strikes it well, but it tails away to the left and wide. And CBC now two scores ahead. Johnny Holland, which is massive in terms of knockout rugby. Oh, it is. And I think you can look at Crescent and their ability to throw the ball around. Jed Dwyer's look very dangerous, but at the end of the day, you know, Christians look to have a more dominant set piece, and it's the fundamentals of the game that are getting them by here. So 8-0, and they've got a little bit of breathing space. They probably have turned with the wind at their backs in the second half, and probably helped them as well. Although it might encourage Crescent to the fact that they have to play a bit more, they'll hold on to the ball, maybe run it a bit better as well. So, a oh, hanging kick from Godfrey, finds his opposite number O'Shea. Puts the ball into the stands. And Crescent, who haven't had a lot of the ball in the last 10 minutes, now have an opportunity before the half with a line out on the 10 metre line. And uh, I think that's good game management. We, we saw Crescent earlier on not getting the ball off the pitch, and it resulted in a penalty for Christians, and they went 3 0 up. Uh, Christians just have gotten the ball off the pitch there, and it, it makes a big difference. They're able to set their defensive line and, and control the pace of the game, like we said before. Crescent's back row player, Fionn Casserly, throwing into the line out. The ball is stolen very well by back rower Daniel Rock, a try scorer in the quarter final win over Prez. Uh, but as the team of ferocious breakdown work continues, Crescent do very well and will have another opportunity to potentially go down the line here. Fascinating encounter at the line outs, lads, but we'll go over that at half time with the scrum half and out half. Yeah. <laughs> at least it wasn't scrums. <laughs> Godfrey lands Crescent just outside the 22 here. As Fionn Casserly readies himself, the ball stolen in the middle of the lineup by Christians just a few moments ago. It's a five man lineout for Crescent. Lining up some big heavy hitters in midfield. Summers takes the ball, a great dart from Casserly. The ball has moved out the back to McInerney. Good carry by Hearn to land Crescent. It's Captain oh. Kelly again who sits down his opposite number. McCarthy, they've had a ding-dong battle in this first half as Summers. He's tackled very well by Christian's inside centre, Gavin O'Reardon. It's Crescent moving out into the wide channel. Christian's line staying connected defensively. 
big three or four minutes before the end of the half. Out the back of Summers to Kelly. Carried well into contact by Dennis O'Dwyer. Godfrey. O'Dwyer looked very, very sharp on the ball. Godfrey hit hard by Christians and he's holding his leg. Good carry there by replacement. Charlie Fenton and Crescent now with phases. Huge collisions here just underneath the posts, 10 metres from the Christians line. Godfrey moves it across to Cusack, but the ball bounces off the chest. And another opportunity for Crescent gone. A touch of Will Connors there off Danny Rock. Danny Rock there for Christians, the Blues scrum cap, chopping anything that moves. He's really getting at the 10 as well, putting pressure on him. Duncan, you spoke about the connectivity between Christians. Their, their line speed and their defensive sets have been very, very, very impressive. They haven't been pinged for offside. The, the defensive penalties that have come from, have come from the breakdown and they're proven very, very difficult to be broke down. Yeah, as you said yourself earlier in the game, you know, I think they obviously have a low tackle focus, so their first aim is to get the guy on the ground and the next man in will try and get a poach or cause a bit of trouble inside the breakdown and slow down the ball. And I think that is working quite well for them. As I, as I just said, Daniel Rock has said shades of Will Connor off there. He's... Yeah. Lasso and lads around the ankles and getting them on the ground and giving the next man entry, entry into the poach. I think the only weakness in Christians there is that they've, you know, they're, they're so solid through the middle. The, the way to beat them might be on an edge, and I think it was on there if he went through yeah. the hands that, you know, the pass might have gone to hand and, and it was a 3v2. They've, they've shown a couple of, um, you know, weaknesses on the Christian edges like that, so they might get their opportunity yet. Casey uses his centre row Reardon to bash up. Charlie O'Shea giving the orders. It's a pass over his head. And there's a block down. Where's it going to bounce? The ball is gone dead. And that's half time. As Joey Neville blows up a frantic first half. Christians lead by eight points to nil. Johnny Holland sum up that first half. Yeah, I think just a, a very long period of sustained pressure from present, but they weren't able to convert into any scores. And I think that's going to be quite demoralizing for them going in a half time, eight nil down. Christians eventually turned the tide after what, close to 20 minutes? and uh, they've used their pack to get themselves back into the game and their, their set piece, their maul and Adam Rona get in for the try so um, it looks to be a little bit of physical dominance although Crescent have come back into the back end of the half Yeah, I think in terms of Crescent it's more kind of lost opportunities they got a lot of entries into Christians 22 didn't capitalise on them and then Christians got out of their half probably two or three times and came away with eight points uh, so I suppose efficiency from Christian's point of view in attack but again Christian's will need to improve their efficiency getting out of their 22 because they've kept inviting pressure back on themselves albeit Crescent didn't capitalise on it but it's only a matter of time I would say Johnny Holland it certainly won't be panic stations for Crescent but um, if your team is 8 points down in this semi-final what's your message for the first 10-15 minutes of the second half? Oh, I think you have to, you know, think about what, not to be negative on it, but I think you have to think about what you can do. You can't give entries, you can't give penalties, you have to have a good defensive line like Christians have shown <laughs> besides the entries. But I think if they can claw that back to one score, you said it was a two-score game, if they can work their way into the game, think about the next action, think about how they're going to get that score. Instead of thinking, geez, eight points is a long way to climb after having a, f a whole half of attacking, I think, think about the way you're going to get back into it. How do you need to play the game up in their half? How are you going to get those entries again? And when you get them, I think they are, they are going to convert at some stage, so stay patient but try and get your way back into the, the right territory and all of a sudden they're going to be looking to get that score that they, they desperately need now. Yeah, I think that's the point. They don't need to change massively what they're doing. They're getting the opportunities. It's just when they get those opportunities now, they need to, I suppose, address the errors that they've made and just capitalise on what pressure they're putting on in there. You know, as I said, you can't defend. I suppose Christian's probably defended for long periods of time there. They can't continue doing that for the whole game. And, uh, so Christian just need to keep doing what they're doing and maybe just tighten up slightly on the errors that they've made. And in terms of Christians, they'll obviously be very, very happy with taking their chances. It's pretty much more the same from, from Tommy Crow and uh, Ian Dunn at halftime. I think you look um, at Christians if that um, weather is, if the wind is going in their direction in the second half. I think you'll, you'll see um, Charlie O'Shea use his boot a small bit more like he did on the, the far right hand side there, the opposite side to us. He'll do that again in this half. And I think if he finds corners and they can use their defensive lineup like they have in the first half, all of a sudden get into an attacking position with their with their maul, their strong pack, you know, that's going to be the. It's easier to play that game on the front foot now, isn't it? 8 0. They're going to be able to go um, a little bit less expansive. They're going to be able to kick into corners, put pressure on in there, and all of a sudden their high scoring game might be gone yeah. uh, because they don't really need to do it. They just need to tip away, get the next score. It could go 11 
and then all of a sudden it's a long way back when, when you're facing into conditions like that. Just just what the spectator ne- needs, less expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's funny we say that because we, we referenced the, the CBC PBC semi final two, two years ago when Ben O'Connor scored last play of the game. And Christians did play expensive that day, so. I think Tommy Crow and Co. We have seen in the first half there that expensive probably isn't a, a word in their dictionary at the moment, but at the same time they're very, very good at the basics. And we saw with the kick in, into the corner and along with the penalties, so it's very much going to be more of the same. So maybe it isn't going to be 30-24, yeah. but um, I suppose the phrase lads is just don't get bored of the basics. 100 percent, and I think their their defence is probably typifying that at the moment. Their defence is very solid. You know, two man hits. I think Mark Skelly is doing a lot of. Uh, Dirty working around the the tackle area. I think uh, Danny Roth, like Duncan has said, is doing a lot of chopping. Aina McCarthy has big moments, but Michael Foy in the second row as well. They've got a lot of big players at the moment that are doing their job, maybe just going about it quietly, and they're getting two-man hits and and uh, stopping the goal forward ball of of Crescent. But we did see Crescent, like you said about Prez two years ago, the way they um, you know they beat them in the last minute. Crescent have the ability here to yeah. be able to throw some passes. You know, one phase of play needs to stick, and all of a sudden, you know, at this level, where fellas will start to. You know, might might become a small bit more disjointed. Uh, if they get one score, if they can open up the game a small bit, all of a sudden the nerves kick back in. It's still a cup game. It's a semi final. It's knockout. You know, so if they can do that and throw the cat amongst the pigeons a small bit more, if you get Jed O'Dwyer around the edge, uh, putting away his wingers, you know, I think one score could really open it up. It is cliché, uh, Duncan, but how important is the uh, the next score? Yeah, well, I think obviously if Christians get the next score, that's a three score game there, which obviously piles the pressure back on Crescent. But um, look, uh, as I say. Crescent obviously like to hold on to the ball as well so playing into a bit of a wind might encourage them to play more and you never know what could happen the longer they hold on to the ball the more pressure Christians will be under and as I said Christians had defended for long periods at the moment so that could take its toll later in the game as well not quite go for broke yet as uh, we're about three or four minutes away from the start of the second half Johnny Holland in terms of an, an attacking uh, masterclass what would you do if you were come to try and break down this resolute Christian's defence well, I think if you're looking at their at their bench you know Oscar Davies is a cup winner he's a schools player uh, an Irish schools player so whether you're putting him straight on at 10 or whether you're using him as a second distributor if you're going to look to use that cri- or move that Christian's pack around the place I think that's a bit of a, a wild card that they can throw at it um, he's a big kicking uh, big boot you know, big kicking game last year against Prez so if you're facing into a win then you're going to struggle to get territory then I think he's a guy that you can bring in um, but yeah I think look Crescent have a great attacking uh, mindset you know they've, they've been quite good um, last year as well like I said so you know you're, you're looking just to get them into space move that pack around and all the time when you're playing against a bigger pack you're going to start to you know you, you have to question their fitness you have to question their mobility, mobility you have to move them around the pitch to see if you can create a few more uh, creaks in that defence because at the moment there's not enough of them yeah they've actually created a bit of space on the wider channel as well as you yeah. said it's just that last pass uh, hasn't stuck so that should give them a bit of confidence and as I said into the wind it's easier to move the ball as well so maybe that will they'll have identified that and try and go for that a little bit more you're suggesting Johnny Holland that uh, backs are fitter than forwards uh, which is largely largely true it, for depen- it depends on the forward there's, <laughs> yeah. a, d- there's an outlier yeah. it depends on what type of fitness yeah we, yeah, <laughs> we won't we won't uh, s- uh, speculate on numbers on that uh, as we said the uh, second half is coming up in just a few moments time uh, today's coverage is in association with the Irish Examiner for the Pinergy Munster Schools Senior Cup uh, semi-final um, there's a little bit of tension in the air lads you can hear with, with Crescent to our, our left hand side the, the Christians fans a lot quieter obviously um, with, with, with the lack of, of attendance but um, we can expect tension to play a part in this and as you said if, if Crescent can manage to get a score they will come back into the game that crowd come in and people start to get nervous well that's it that crowd are going to come back into the game at the moment they're a small bit quieter because you know it is a two score game but if the, the Crescent team can give them something to shout about they will get it behind them and it's all of a sudden going to feel uh, very tense for the Christians, uh, Christian players you know, I was so. expecting a bit of the Wheelstone Raider for them. you got no fans <laughs> <laughs> it didn't come though <laughs> Killian Kelly leads the Crescent team out after the wise words of Ian Sherwin, Lee Nicholas and co. Christians taking their time on the way out, but... Uh, the right duel between Ian Sherwin and Tommy Crow to decide who's been coaching longer. <laughs> 40 to 50 years between the both of them, it's... Uh, they should have been doing the half-time show. There is, lads, I suppose, a subplot today of, of for schools rugby. It's, it's such a unique experience in that if you are in sixth year, barring a repeat, it's, it's your last game, so... Does that play in the back of the minds of, of guys in the, this could be the last 35 minutes in the jersey? Yeah, as I said, kind of when I was playing, it was always like it was more of a pressured environment, whereas you know you had to win, and it kind of took any bit of enjoyment out of it. So I lost it all 
different levels obviously I won one lost to the semi-final lost to the quarter-final so I think it was actually a quarter-final in my sixth year and that was it that was my last game of rugby in school so um, it can be quite tough to take but look I suppose they have the back door now so at least you get to experience more than one, one of the occasions at least I get the feeling Duncan Williams would prefer to be 18 on the pitch today than ah, 2001 stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> But it does bring a bit of emotion to some of those lads and you might see that coming out in the, the more senior players. But just one interesting thing, you know, we've seen John Cassidy throw, throwing into the line out now. I wonder, um, he looks comfortable enough. I wonder yeah. how comfortable he'll be when the pressure comes on because Adam Rowan has been hitting his mark. Much like CBC's heroics against PBC, Duncan uh, camper right back in this game a minute and a half into the second half. Yeah, dream start there, obviously. Uh, the offside after the kick-off and then Crescent, or Christian kicked the ball out in the full. So uh, this should give Crescent a bit of confidence and uh, maybe liven up the game a bit here. O'Callaghan lining up his first receiver on the right-hand side of Lyons with Godfrey to his left. So Crescent have got options. They elect to go to the right-hand side. Lyons, lovely little dink in behind. Will he get the bounce? Doesn't quite. Ball is in the hands of Lynch. Has been very assured all afternoon, and a no-nonsense clearance for Christians. And Camp will have another attack with Camp setting the tone early. Johnny Halland and right back in the game. And that's the corner that Christians used to get themselves back into the game as well, wasn't it? So we spoke about you know what will what will they be speaking about at half time, and I think that's the the nightmare start for Christians. They didn't want to do that, you know, cat, catch your kick off get the ball off the pitch and, and reset again. But obviously Crescent have gotten their way into the game uh, while using that right hand corner as well. A little ray of sunlight from Limerick got in a CBC eye early doors in the second <laughs> half as Casserly finds his man. Lions, good carry there again. Fenton has been really abrasive since he's come into the game and Crescent with a pre-planned move here on the inside. Jed O'Dwyer, little ticket behind. It's well fielded by Christians over on the right-hand side. Been interested if you held that and put it through the hands there as he put the kick through. Christians through Rona again has made yards, priceless yards for Christians on every single carry to the fore of everything good they've done. Captain McCarthy, Crescent shooting off the line there, putting them under pressure. That wind is going into the right-hand corner, so it is a difficult enough kick to get distance on the box. But Jack Casey takes the onus on himself. The ball will stay in play. Fair challenge for two players in the air. And Christians move forward with the ball. There's an opportunity to go in behind again, but Foy again with a carry. Been a tremendous battle between two front fives. Nice little dink over the top here. There's a lot of ground to make up. But Godfrey has dropped it, and the ball is on the move, and it's in the hands of Christians. 
And the winner is going to score, and it's Barrett who scores for Christians. And Johnny Holland, we might get this 30-24, but the game has exploded into life in the second half. Yeah, hopefully. I think he likes that corner as well. Um, but interestingly, you see the Christians obviously looking to, to kick the ball a small bit more. But Benjamin Lynch looks like he's quite comfortable back there. You know, he's gotten himself out of trouble a few times, and that's a big score to, to open up the game. A good acknowledgement of space there. Duncan Williams with Christians potentially seeing the, the space, a fortuitous bounce. But yeah, you could see he identified it as well. He flattened up the line and demanded the ball and put the chip, a uh, nice little kick in there. As in these pitches, you let the ball bounce, you know, you never know what could happen. It could go anywhere. Christopher Barrett in a carbon copy. Well, not quite a carbon copy of the crossfield kick, but in the exact same position to score in the right hand corner there. He, he won't make YouTube this time with that one. <laughs> not like the last one. The score is 13-3. Five minutes into the second half, the game exploding into life as Lynch here lines up. Great strike by Lynch. It's a really good kick, Johnny Holland, into the into the, ki the conditions. Yeah, he's got a lovely slow action. He looks very controlled. It's not, no real surprise. But you can see Oscar Davy has just come onto the pitch. So there's your there's your wild card. I'm told his his grandmother Rita is above and in is watching on. So uh, it's good to see him on the pitch. I think he'll take a lot of control of this as well. Well, we had to wait roughly 35 and a half minutes for the game to come to life. But let's hope the second half continues in this form as the high hanging kick. No mistake this time, fielded very, very well by Christians. Daniel Rock, very good on both sides of the ball. Casey. The hard yards by the Christian forwards being made. Charlie O'Shea barking the orders. Rock again. Camp staying very disciplined on this side. And Casey. High hanging kick again. O'Dwyer does well to field, but a very good chase by Christians, but he rides the tackle. O'Dwyer so elusive in contact as Camp looks to make a carry here. There is potential space on out wide as Gavin O'Reardon calls his Christians teammates out. Who needs space when the forwards are around? Another carry up the middle. It's a good kick in behind by Lyons. Does he get the bounce? And that's Great a kick. superb kick for Crescent, which puts. Christians right back the linesman hasn't made up his mind I'm not sure if it was a 50-22 but he's given the line out no, I think that was well inside but <laughs> in, in the Christians half but that's again you know their entry into the game they're kicking a lot more it's a great kick from, from Marcus Lyons I think they'll do a lot more of that from both half backs in, in this half Christians take the ball at the old four and a half a very good set at the front of them all there. Both Doyle and Foy doing very, very well with Foster. Little half break there from Casey. Oh, Rock yeah, plays nine. He's gone down injured there. <laughs> Was it coming down the line out? Carry again from Christians is Casey. Hits O'Shea. And O'Shea takes touch. Just shy of the 10 metre line. CBC captain Aina McCarthy does look to be in a bit of bother. Let's hope he is okay. As yeah, one of the camp players is suffering from what looks like cramp. Aina McCarthy's holding his knee there. That's one of those ones I don't really want to know the outcome because you take a good guess when he's coming down off a line out like that. Um, hopefully he'll get back to his feet, but he looks in, in great pain. Well, there is uh, a break in the game. As we said, today's coverage of the Pinnacle Munster Schools Senior Cup semi final here in Musgrave Park is brought to you by the Irish Examiner, Dara Frawley, Duncan Williams and Johnny Holland on commentary. Um, Johnny, we joked before the game about a 30-24, but the game has really exploded into life. The shackles are off in the second half. Ah, there's time yet. Christians are holding their side of the bargain with another score or two. But <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's definitely, the, you know, there's been a bit of life in the second half. I think Crescent have gotten a bit of territory now and they're putting the pressure on and all of a sudden that crowd is singing again, you know, so that, that's a big part of this game. Um, they obviously need to get their score, they're sitting on three points, so hopefully for, for my prediction and the, the goodness of the game, they can get one soon. The they get big boosts here for them as well if Ian and McCarthy goes off, you know, that'll 
give uh, Crescent a bit of wind in their sails as well. So. Crescent have found it very difficult to, to find that space in the, the 215s though, Johnny, because of, of Christian's defence and staying connected and with the breakdown. The breakdown has really been pivotal there, so would you say Cre Crescent probably need to commit a body or two extra for that breakdown to get quicker ball or just keep going the way they're going and the space will open up? Yeah, I think we've been complimentary of, um, of Crescent getting space on the edges, but Christian's have obviously set up like that. You know, they're probably leaving those edges because they're so solid in the middle and they're nearly daring them to get there. And if Crescent have, have nearly gotten there, but it's always been under pressure because of how tight that defence has been in the middle. So I think you, you have to break that up at some stage. You know, you can't keep trying to go around it because there have been a few errors under pressure, but, you know, they're, they're still going to get uh, opportunities on the edges. But at some stage, you know, someone like Charlie Fenton has, has been doing a good job of breaking up the Christian's defence in the middle. So maybe a couple more carries from him and we'll see if they can get their score. Yeah, I'd like to see. Owen O'Callaghan get on the ball a bit more he had one or two nice little touches there in the first half uh, so I think Crescent should try and get a bit of a ball to him Captain Aina McCarthy's race is run this afternoon we wish him a speedy recovery he's replaced boy number 19 Connor Kennelly Joey Neville says they're waiting for Captain McCarthy to depart the pitch talismanic leader is McCarthy and a sad loss for him but his, Kennelly, his replacement Kennelly is uh, a unit of a young fella. Yeah, another big man. So the, the Christian's physicality isn't going anywhere. I think that's tough to see. You spoke about, you know, lads getting opportunities in the cup and someone as talismanic as um, Aina McCarthy. You know, it's hard to see him come off like that. His replacement, Kennelly, an instant oh! impact stealing the line out from Crescent on the 10 metre line. McCarthy orchestrating from 10 now has the ball in his hands and they decide to play and rock pass fired at him and Summers on the move here Crescent and a great carry good clear out as well straight into the wide channels in the hands of Josh Boland Crescent set up again through Fenton Crescent having multiple options on the ball looking to go through phases to put this defence under pressure and it's a good carry again through Kelly the captain bringing the fight from Crescent. The counter up. Lovely little show and go on O'Dwyer. Tried to back his pace there. There's an opportunity here as Crescent looked to go in. It's going to be a foot race to get to the ball. And it just goes dead. Duncan, you said before you would have liked to have seen Jed O'Dwyer keep the ball in hand. He did kick it again there, but you can see Crescent tried to back their pace and their outside wingers to get in behind that Christian's yeah, defence. Yeah, he looked money's, uh, money on to get that there, yeah. But, um, yeah, look, I think they said they, they get the ball to the 50-metre channel there. I think and you can see Christians were struggling for numbers a bit. Um, yeah, I think, you know, if, yeah, they kicked it. It was a bit dangerous, but I think they hold on to the ball, just go through a bit more, few more phases. They can put Christians under a bit more pressure. Small margins in this Munster School Senior Cup semi-final. The ball kicked dead by O'Dwyer and we will come all the way back to the 10. Johnny Holland in terms of game management you can imagine Tommy Crow and Ian Dunn will be telling Charlie O'Shea not to pass the ball like that and to kick it down the field. Yeah I think it, you spoke about expansive I'm not sure it was an expensive 10 yard pass but yeah, I think like you look at territory and maybe getting away from your own half and stop giving Crescent the opportunity and a bit of um, a bit of air you know so maybe strangle them a bit more get them into the corners and get the control back in the game. Casey to O'Shea O'Reardon with a good carry another carry again around the corner by Foy O'Shea attacking the gain line here with options brought down by O'Callaghan Rock going well Christian's deciding to open up again here seeing an opportunity Rock again with great strength in the carry Barrett the try scorer plays at 9 the ball has moved out the back oh, nice. and Christian's have an opportunity out the back here through Lynch it's a simple 2 on 1 here as they move on the outside Crescent do well to scramble defensively. The ball is given to Rona again. Been highly confrontational in contact, but it's a foot in touch there, and the ball is up. And Johnny Holland, I think the Christian sideline may have heard you say that they didn't play expensive because they decided to play immediately. We never really mind how to get into the opposition territory once they get in there with the run kick. But they, no, they've run it there with a lot of pace on the ball. And you can see Charlie O'Shea starting to pose around the place. You said about shadow boxing at the start of the game. Maybe that was Christian's shadow boxing over. They're obviously able to bring a bit more to their game as well but it was nice and controlled you know Gavin O'Reardon up the middle um, getting them go forward and then Charlie O'Shea starting to zip around the place so a little bit more of that I think for the neutral spectator would be great to see well, we spoke about uh, Daniel Rock in defence but a great carry there great bit of momentum and then I think Benjamin Lynch has actually been very impressive he's quite a calm head on 
and young shoulders. Tackle, release. Crescent secured the ball five metres from the line out. To look for another carry to get good field position. It's Fenton again, very abrasive in the contact. And Christian stacking around the ruck. Lions told to use it by referee Neville. Lions right legged. Finds a good touch. Great kick. It's a good exit from Crescent. That's a good exit, but I think Christians are very happy where they are now. You know, that little bit of life that they brought into themselves. They have good attacking opportunities here. You know, you can, you can look at it and try and squeeze a penalty and go 18-3, or they can, you know, continue what they've just done. They, they hurt Crescent there. Maybe Crescent didn't expect it from the way they played the game in the first half, but I think they can, uh, they can definitely open up a small bit more. Great dart again by Christians. Go flat into the middle. Decide to move it out. Keeping this Crescent defence guessing. Ball is in the hands of O'Shea. Lovely little dink in behind and Barrett against O'Dwyer. And O'Dwyer is off and is on the outside. He's a great broken field runner is O'Dwyer. Does very, very well. The Irish under-18 schools player has been Crescent's danger man all afternoon. Summers takes an under his carry there. Marshalled well by the Christians' defence. And Joey Neville tells scrum half Marcus Lyons not to do it again. I think it was uh, a bit of an old school shoeing, you might call that. A limerick shoeing. Uh, the touch judge is in. He let him know, all right. But listen, but listen. If I see that action again, you'll leave the field of play. If I see that action again, you'll leave the field of play. Clear communication from Joy Neville there. And this gives Benjamin Lynch the opportunity to further extend CBC's lead. Johnny, from a, a Christian's perspective, we spoke about the play being the right-hand corner of the Dolphin end. Are they cognizant of the fact that Jed O'Dwyer is probably the best broken field runner? They don't want to be kicking ball loose to him in a, in a Schools Cup semi-final? I think uh, the management will be, you know, <laughs> so when you're, when you're on the pitch like that, I think player, players are... Resilient, they back themselves, they'll want to keep playing here, but I think it's the sideline will be probably trying to put a small bit of matters on that now. I think starting with this kick at goal as opposed to going back to the corner. I think they could have done damage if they went to the corner, but this is a cup game, like we said, they're 15 3. You just keep putting them out of reach uh, further and further. I think that will, uh, will bode well for them. Carl Lanigan, Ryan, and Connor Ryan come on in the front row to reinforce the Crescent Stocks. Lynch judged to kick from a very similar position to perfection moments ago. Wind is swirling from right to left there. Lynch strikes it well, but it tails off to the left and Crescent survive on this occasion. But that clearance kick isn't going to find touch. It does find grass. It gives Crescent an extra couple of steps in that defensive line. It's a great carry by Michael Foy. Maul is called by referee Neville. And Crescent will have a restart in the scrum. I think Michael Foy has got to eight since Aidan McCarthy has got off his LSE. So big onus on him now to carry that workload. Taking down for right. Yes, it's moving but it's not I think available. Michael Foy is asking the question that you know he wasn't really tackled yet, was he? He was still <laughs> moving forward. But funnily enough, you know you're slagging the backs all day. Jed Dwyer is in there creating them all for himself and getting the turnover for his team. So a big play from one of their leaders. I think both nines have looked very assured as well yeah. today. Jack Casey has been marshalling his own crowd when they're in their own territory, but Marcus Lines is coming more and more into the game too. Lions with the feed. Christian's putting pressure on, trying to get Rock up. Ooh, Crescent kicked the ball straight into the hands of Barrett, the danger man. Already got a try this afternoon after his heroics against Prez O'Shea. Lovely little slide of hands to Benjamin Lynch. So assured on the ball. Ball judged not to have been out, but Crescent looking to counter. Referee says no hands, but Christians come in the side. 
Foy trying to win the ball back for his team, but referee Neville saying he's coming the side. And Crescent look to up the tempo here as the ball goes down the line. And it's a super kick given the angle he had. And Crescent will have a line out inside the 10. I think it's just uh, the kick choice of Crescent there, kicking across the body from the right foot. You know, the space might have been there, but it just probably wasn't the right call. And then you see Daniel Rock is quite aware. Crescent thought of a nine here. Sorry. All right. Danny Rock's quite aware of the ball coming out of the ruck and he's sticking his foot back, but no one's coming there to join him, so Crescent have done very well to, to disrupt that. Foy with a great steal again. Crescent trying to go to the tail of the line out, but Christians with their homework done. The ball is in hands of Rock out the back again to O'Shea. He's got O'Connell in his inside, it likes not to use him. And O'Shea goes, and the tackle probably had to be made by Crescent there. No handout from Joy Neville just yet. Did look to be a little bit high, but we play on here in Musgrave Park. Christians move the ball forward five metres. Ahead of the 10 metre line, Crescent trying to disrupt. Little show and go, and a knock on. Looked pretty high there, but uh, referee Neville has been very assured all afternoon, much to the behest of the uh, CBC supporters to our right. Yeah, I actually don't know how to call that one. It was definitely along the line of the shoulder, grabbing at the jersey. It wasn't overly dangerous, so maybe we're looking at the flow of the game, but it could have gone either way. Good attack and play from Charlie O'Shea again, though. For me, the grab was in the back of the jersey, so I'm fine. Thank you, though. Uh, Clear comes again from Joy Neville in conversation with the touch judge, saying that the tackle was at the back of the jersey. Strong. 53 minutes gone here, roughly 17 and a half minutes plus stoppages yes. remaining. Not quite Hail Mary time at the moment, Johnny Holland, but uh, Crescent are going to have to start throwing caution into the wind sooner rather than later with the score remaining as it is. Yeah, not Hail Mary time, but you can see Oscar Davies' distribution Fine. is actually quite sharp. It's going yeah. to put his outside backs into good position, so I think this time they're not going to be kicking the ball, I think, off a, a right foot, going right to left. I'd like to see them having a cut at the outside backs. Right. Ball is at the nine. base. Lions to Davy. How wrong was I? High <laughs> left kick. Take that. Lynch takes it very well. Decides at the last minute to kick. It's going to be Davy here again. Puts on footwork. And a left-footed kick. A little bit early, but Summers. Very good skill set for a big man. And Presner on the move here. And it's at the wire on the right hand side. And he goes around. Christian swarm the rock. But the isolated rocks generally on, on that side of the pitch, Johnny Hollands, nobody with him, but a wonderful piece of broken field running from Jed O'Dwyer. Unbelievable running from, from Jed, O'Dwyer, Jed O'Dwyer. I think he, he got fortunate to get that ball back after they were blocked down. I, I understand their want to kick for territory, but you know I think when it's a bit more of a stalemate and they're trying to get into the Christians' half, but I think they have opportunities here in their own half to start keeping the ball in hand and see what their outside backs can do. Like you said, Jed O'Dwyer is causing a lot of trouble. Um, but Christian seemed to have the, the answers for them. Um, Great work by Alex O'Connell there to get back and get out of the coach. Yeah, well, the he's penalty. been fired up as well. I think he's been giving it back to the present man, so uh, a lot of passion going into it. CBC's huge commitment to defence has kept Crescent to a sole penalty to score 15-3 here after 55 minutes in the yeah. Munster School Senior Cup semi-final in association with the Irish Examiner in Musgrave Park. As Rona gets ready, Foy, the dummy, they like to go to the tail. Knock on. A little bit of jiggery pokery on the right hand of the jumper there from Crescent. Not seen by the officials. But it's been a ding dong battle at a set piece all day, and we will restart with a scrum. One of Duncan Williams' favourite things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone can make head or tail of scrums these days. Lee Nicholas and Ian Sherwin deep in conversation in front of our gantry position here, Crescent. Coach. Setting up as if they're going Five. to go. Six. Hold. Hold. Stop. Lions with the feed to McInerney, to Davy. Lovely little pass to O'Dwyer. Tries to get on the inside shoulder Stay. of Murphy, but he does well to tackle O'Dwyer, the danger man for Crescent. Big collision in midfield there. Godfrey again to Davy. Lovely little flat ball. Christian staying connected. Bit of a mess at the breakdown. And Christians, much like they've done from the opening minutes, chopping and clamping. And I think it was Adam Rona again with the turnover there. Listen, listen, listen. 
listen, the next time a player screams me like that, there'll be a penalty against you, and then thereafter you leave the pitch. Okay, that player. Tempers perhaps flaring. Johnny Holland for, for Crescent here, a little bit of frustration, exactly what's not needed to yeah, get back into the game. I think when the when the pressure comes on, we all let out a little scream or two, so I think you have to you know, keep the emotion in check a small bit here and, and find their way through what is, a, you know, a, a Christian's defence that isn't really becoming any weaker at the moment. Even with changes, I don't think they're going to get weaker at this stage, so it's going to be hard to, to break them up. Ben Gallagher enters the fray for Crescent Camp. Just over 13 minutes left on the clock as Benjamin Lynch, his trusty right boot, finds touch and Christians will have a line-out just outside the 10 metre line. Michael Foy calling a six-man line-out. The call given by Sam Laftis to Rona. Nice bit of movement in Foy again. He's been imperious in the air all afternoon and Christians look to set their mall. Good foundation at the front. Crescent doing their best to disrupt as referee Neville says one stop. Ball with Casey, out the back to O'Shea. The Sexton wraparound, not this time, but O'Reardon has his pocket picked by McInerney. His opposite number. Christian's very quick to try and fold, and they're going to go quickly. And it's Summers again. CBC, a judge to have been 10 there. Davey with a lovely little bit of distribution. Johnny Holland loving that, no doubt. He's pulling some strings now, isn't he? Davy again. It's on if they go around the corner here. Christian's winger Barris asking to fold. McInerney tries to go over the head of Lynch, unorthodox. The ball is taken in, says referee Neville. And Lynch beats O'Dwyer. And it's Crescent's Mark Fitzgerald in the backfield to turn over. Game breaking up here a small bit with the introduction of replacements as Fenton carries well. Crescent just over the 10 metre line in the 5 metre channel inside the Christians half. Crescent trying to go at the back there but options not around. Davy this time does see O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer moves it out and it's a lovely flow to pass to winger Josh Boland. And Barrett has his hands on the ball. The referee never so will say there was no release in the tackle. Christian's defence has been incredibly impressive even on that fold there Duncan you said a couple of times Camp had the opportunity to go but they're just so disciplined and their knowledge to get around the corner to fill up those spaces is, is uh, quite impressive Yeah for a second or two there it looked like a quick ball the Crescent ran to go but to be fair to Christian's they weren't hard on the fold and uh, Barrett stayed in the contest there I know he got penalised with there but for a small man he did well stayed in the contest Dennis Callahan enters the fray for Christian's but a beef you look, the, the Christian's defence is obviously quite solid, but I'm watching the, the far right-hand corner where Crescent are playing it down. It's always open, that's why they've started to kick the ball in there, but it's open because the, the Christian's, you know, full-back is pushing, the winger's pushing, they're only using two men in the backfield, and they're clogging up the front field, so you know, they can turn and kick the ball over their right shoulder if they want to, but Christian's will welcome that, you know, they're yeah. clearing it up. I think you'd have to do a lot to um, put Benjamin Lynch out of his comfort zone, he looks very, very comfortable, so they're, they're not going to get the rewards in there, they can't really kick the ball away with, with time running out as well, so Christian's now are starting to cloak the front line and put them under more pressure. Oscar Davy finds touch inside the 22, the ball in the hands of Fionn Casserly, as Crescent elect to go for a four-man line-out here. The rain starting to come down in Musgrave Park, there's a lovely little dump on the inside, but the referee has called it back, a little bit telegraphed. You could see that was on early from the start. Uh, yeah, Christian from Crescent. No interest in looking behind him. Christians will have the option of a scrummer line out. And Michael Foy, who has taken over the captaincy since the departure of Aina McCarthy, elects for a scrum on the 15. We speak about big moments, uh, Johnny Holland. If Crescent want to get back into this game and make it a one-score game through a try, they really need to start taking those opportunities. Yeah, they've had a couple of opportunities as well, haven't they? Like, they've been creating them. They're, I'd say they look back at this video, coaches look back at the video, and maybe they won't if they get knocked out of a competition, they leave it there, but they have created opportunities. You maybe have to look at why they didn't convert them. Yeah. 
Crescent eager to put Christians under pressure. The introduction of Dennis Callahan to the Christians front row, adding additional power to an already powerful unit. Crescent captain Killian Kelly rousing his troops. They know they need a big final. Ten minutes in this Munster School Senior Cup semi-final. Casey feeds. So Reardon makes the yards there, getting on the outside of Davy. Christian's working towards an exit. Good carry from Keen Walsh, another one of the substitutes for Christians who's come into the game. Casey high and hanging, ball will be a bit greasy, but Davy takes it well. Christian's defence marshalling him. McInerney zips the pass out along the wet surface, and it's Boland on the right hand side, and he does manage to get outside just over the 10 metre line. Christian's doing their best to counter Ruck here. Very tight in defence there. Kelly with a good carry. Davy, nice distribution there. Summers with the clear out. McInerney has his pocket picked. Very well by Christians there. And O'Shea, the ball bounces to oh. Barrett. Barrett does love an unorthodox means of getting into the opposition half. McInerney. Saw a man down in backfield, but Jack O'Shea helps his mate out. Has a little look up, steps inside. Very elusive, but he's held on to very, very well by Casserly of Crescent. Foy with a good carry. Game becoming broken up here now in the last seven or eight minutes. Casey calls for Cam. Sends the ball high. O'Dwyer. Leaves it for his mate, Cormac Quinn of Crescent. A stray CBC hand there. Davy moves the ball into backfield, but Christians have it filled very well, and O'Shea has a little look up. If he can keep that one in play, just didn't quite get the bounce. McInerney moves it into O'Dwyer, and O'Dwyer is going to go off in a gallop. Beats three or four players, but Michael Foy and Co. swarm him up. Play just inside the half for Crescent here. Davy moves the ball outside, and it's Summers stretching those long legs. Well, well tackled by Gavin O'Reardon on the right-hand touchline. Ball moved up again. The pace of the game is now picked up. It's Fenton. He's met by Foy on the right-hand side. 15 metres in from touch. Davy says he's going to have a little go. There's been many a distributor since he's come on, but Paul's getting been in play a long time here. Crucial yards, and we can see that there's a lot of guys touching their calves and hamstrings. McInerney at nine. Fenton says go at the back. Davy, a little dink in behind. A lot of ground to cover for Christians here. Whichever way the ball bounces, Barrett shepherding it towards the touchline. And Summers hits him. Barrett does incredibly well to keep his legs in from touch there. And it will be a penalty to Crescent. And uh, Johnny Holland, are we in Hail Mary time now? <laughs> I think you are, I think you are. But like there, there's a lot of calls of loosen and fold. Oh, a bit of trouble going on here. I think Crescent have been getting roiled up, maybe a lay tackle earlier on. Um, Lou said Mark Fitzgerald wasn't happy with it, and I think he's still having to go over it. Joy Neville who's been clear with communication all day. The penalty will stay with Crescent, although she is going to have a conversation with both captains. 
Crescent did have a five meter tap penalty in the first half close to the line where they did try a variation of the two three set up so important here not to, to potentially get held up over the line though with the, the, the timing we are in the game I think all this talking and slowing the game down is just going to suit Christians ball is at the feet of Casserly Crescent need a score Casserly moves it out to Kelly and it's a substitute and it's a wonderful score from Crescent. We said his Mary time, Carl Lanigan Ryan has brought Crescent potentially back within a score, depending on the conversion and Johnny Holland were set up for a stellar finish here. Yeah, they actually had a lovely variation, um, you know, from the, the Sheehan playbook, I think, with Ireland in the first half, and that's a lovely, great variation there. I think the pass was always going to go inside, but I didn't see the, the pass being thrown after that. Um, and there was a big hole for uh, the sub to, to run into. Well, Callahan pulls the conversion to the left-hand side. And the gap remains seven points. Three and a half plus stoppages. They might have that missed the conversion, but now there's a chance, isn't there? It's a one yeah. score. I think if you're Crescent, like we spoke about it before the game, if they replay this game, you know, you put Christians out of their comfort zone a small bit more, if they started to move a few more passes, obviously it's easier in hindsight than they got behind, but, you know, they, they've made them quite uncomfortable when they were able to move the passes a little bit earlier. Tommy Crow calls for reinforcements, Stephen O'Shaughnessy and Connor Foley into the fray in the championship minutes here in Musgrave Park in this Munster School Senior Cup semi-final. Coverage brought to you by the Irish Examiner. Mightn't have been 30 24 lads, but we certainly got a hell of a second half. I just said one score game, did I? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie O'Shea taking his time. The game hangs in the balance here. High hanging kick, oh, but it's gone a little bit far, and Crescent will have a starter play on the halfway line. Seven points the gap. We are on a running clock here in Musgrave Park. There is time left for Crescent, but there is little room for errors. McInerney has slotted in well at nine, Duncan, since uh, moving in from inside centre for Crescent. Yeah, he's done well. The game has opened up a bit as well since he's been on. Uh, not due to him in general, but just the, the way the game has gone. Um, I think Chris is here and he'd just be smart, let them have the ball. And just, you know, I think when they fill the field, they're, they're well comfortable, so they're well able to defend them. So. Ball is in the hands of Davy. Jedo De Moyer. O'Callaghan looked to be a touch forward, but O'Callaghan, big rangy man, ball bounces off the head. Open play. Summers. Fenton hit very, very hard and low. A textbook tackle from the Christians replacement, George Good. Oh, that's a lovely little line break from the Crescent's replacement, Connor Ryan. They've got numbers on the outside. Christian's looking frantically to go there. Ball is skipped through Davy. And Crescent looking to play. Anywhere will do there. Boots being thrown at it on that right hand touchline. The ball it's still on the Crescent side. Christian's trying frantically to disrupt the ball. McInerney goes out the back. Crescent still playing. Summers has been brilliant all afternoon. O'Dwyer, wonderful footwork. He's got O'Connor on his outside. O'Callaghan being shepherded towards the top side. O'Callaghan's going to oh, go. And pace. he puts the ball down. Come at the man, come at the hour. O'Callaghan will have the opportunity to level the game through his own try. And much like Christians in that quarter final win against Prez, Camp seemed to have come back from the dead. If he had just that bit of composure, he could have gone in closer to make his kick a bit easier. Maybe he wanted this way. 30-24 across two legs, is it? <laughs> we'll be back next Tuesday. Owen O'Callaghan would have dreamed of this moment. He scored in the corner. He certainly has the opportunity, distance-wise. Pulled a kick about 12 metres to the right, just to the left of the post. O'Callaghan lines it up. Strikes it very, very well. And O'Callaghan splits the posts for Crescent Con. 
and in a game that seemed to be the anthem with six minutes to go is now somehow level lads you can't beat schools by, school by rugby it's an amazing kick I saw it was at Ben O'Connor's one last year the two of them he had last year like a Tiger Woods stinger into the wind and that's, uh, that's followed suit I think you've got a couple of big substitutions that have to be made for Christians, like you're looking at Gavin Reardon in the middle of the pitch, Adam Rona, Michael Doyle. There's a lot of big players for them going off the pitch and you know all of a sudden gaps start to open up. And as we get our breath here in Musgrave Park, to my knowledge it will be a replay next week as there is no extra time in underage schoolboy rugby, so uh, let Johnny Allen sum up the last 10 minutes. I can't, but we, we spoke about uh, Crescent maybe loosening up a small bit, throwing a couple of extra passes. I think Oscar Davey has possibly you know, earned his start for next week, the way he's able to distribute the ball. I think if he was on from the start as well, you know, his, his kicking game is quite good, nice and controlled, and if you do that from the start, you know, it's obviously going to give them a little bit more control and pressure too. So possibly the, the wild card off the bench that we spoke about was... Christians will be kicking themselves, they're in full control of that game for at least an hour, you know, maybe not in control in the first half, but defensively they were, and uh, the looser game looked to look to suit Crescent. Yeah, but let's give Crescent uh, credit, you know, as well, they got two well-worked tries, I know they didn't, sc they scored off, a qu off the penalty tap, but to get them up to the five-metre line was good play, and great play to score at the end there, and an unbelievable kick to finish it as well, so... Um, the never say die attitude, um, lads. We spoke about uh, testosterone flowing through both squads before the game. There's going to be some angry individuals, but the beauty is they get to do it again, all again next week. We will bring you details uh, of that game as we get them. A reminder that we are back tomorrow at 1:15 for a 1:30 p.m. kickoff between St. Munchen's College and PBC and uh, hopefully that's it's more the same with that regard but uh, what a game and again as Duncan alluded to Johnny the never say die of, of, of Crescent there the, the likes of the guys that played in the final before what a comeback from them in the last five six minutes and they had composure there and I think if, if Duncan's putting on his developmental hat again these, all, these guys all get to get another game in the cup you know uh, a hard fought semi final again next week. You just want to see a lot of these guys playing more rugby, you know. So that's the for the neutrals, I think it's, it's great that everyone gets to come out and watch it again. It was a really good, really good semi final when it opened up. It got very exciting at the end. Um, but yeah, never say die. I think they, they possibly the scoring off the set piece, it was well worked from Crescent's perspective. Christians would be kicking themselves because that came just too early to, to shut them out for the end of the game, you know. So if they could have held their defensive set there, it would have been a long way to go for Crescent. But, you know, they came up with a variation, well worked, obviously well practiced. And, and they're well uh, well worth their draw. Well, we, we spoke in the first half that Chris was actually defended for long periods of time, so maybe that took its toll at the end there. Obviously, Crescent got their scores in the last five minutes, so you know, maybe that's a learning point for Chris as well, that they can't afford to be defending for that length of time in the first half, and when they exit, they need to get out of there and stay out of there. A highly entertaining game here in the Munster School Senior Cup semi-final in association with the Irish Examiner. Uh, a reminder that we will be back tomorrow at 1.15 for the second semi-final between St. Munchens College in, from Limerick and PBC Cork. A highly entertaining game and many thanks to Johnny Holland and Duncan Williams from myself, Dara Frawley and the Irish Examiner. Have a very good afternoon.